We have the great privilege this week to read Parshas Vayera. And there are many incredible and beautiful dramatic episodes and stories that unfold over this Parsha. The Parsha opens with Avram Avinu being a few days after the Brismila, after the circumcision that we learned about in last week's Parsha. He's sitting by the entranceway of the tent and who comes to visit him? None other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu, none other than the Rebbein Shalom God himself comes to do the mitzvah of Biker Cholim. But Avram Avinu, the man of Chesed, sees a need. He sees three strangers kind of walking around a bit aimlessly, realizes that they need a place to eat, they need a place to sit. So he runs out and invites them in for some special Avram Avinu hospitality. But these three men, of course, turn out to be no ordinary three men, but turn out to be three angels, three malachim. Angels sent to Avram Avinu's tent with a very specific mission. One, to heal Avram from, Ram from the pain of the brismila. A second, to announce the birth of Yitzchak. And a third, to destroy the cities of stone. And after the meal is over, the angels begin their journey to the city of stone. And it is then that Avram Avinu stops HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he says, Wait, Ribbono Shel Olam, you've told me what you're going to do to stone, but I beg of you, don't destroy the whole city. It has to be that there's someone righteous. It has to be that there's someone good. And Avram begins a long and protracted bargaining process with Hashem. If there are 50 righteous people, 40 righteous people, 30 righteous people, but by the time the negotiations come to an end, it becomes abundantly clear that there are no righteous people in the city of stone. Avram Avinu realizes he has no ability to sway, to change HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mind. And so the Malachim continue on to stone with their task of destroying the city. But not everyone is to be lost. Lot, the nephew of Avram Avinu, together with his family, or at least parts of his family, are saved from the city of stone, are rescued, and are able to re-begin, or I should say, start the new chapter of their life outside of the city of stone. Torah tells us then about other famines that occur within Eretz Kinan. Avram Avinu forced to relocate to Grar, where he has a run-in with Avimelech. Then he has run-ins with Avimelech's shepherds. And then we come to the end of the parsha, where we have perhaps one of the most dramatic stories, the story of the Akedah. The story where Hashem tells Avram Avinu, take your son, your only son, the son that you love, Yitzchak, and offer him up as a carbon. And Avram Avinu is ready to do so. Avram Avinu is ready to go ahead and offer up his one and only son. And in the moment when Avram Avinu is about to shecht, his son, the divine voice comes out and says, Atishlach yadcha lanar. Avram, do not do anything to the child. This was a test. And Avram Avinu passes the test, a willingness to listen to the word, to the command of Hashem, no matter how difficult, no matter how overwhelming. And there are many beautiful lessons to be learned from this week's parasha. We learn about the importance of chesed, about the importance of taking care of other people. Avram Avinu, although he was not in the best, best state of health as a result of the bris, nevertheless, he looks around and is attentive, pays attention to the needs of others. He sees three people who are nomadic, who have no place to go, and even though he's old and he's in pain, he runs after them to invite them into his home. This teaches us an incredible lesson. Because we all know the value of chesed, the importance of doing acts of kindness for another person. But sometimes we only do chesed when we're in the right frame of mind to do so. When everything is okay in my life is when I'll take care of the needs of the other. But if not, if everything is in order for me, then I'm not going to put myself out for the other. But that's not what it means to be a bal chesed. To be a bal chesed, to be a grandchild of Avram Avinu means that you're always looking out for the needs of the other even when it's inconvenient for you, that you're always doing good for the other, even when it's inconvenient for you, that you're always taking care of the other, even when not all of your needs are being met. But the chassad of Avram Avinu goes even further because the chassad of Avram Avinu applies even to people who are not like him, even to people who do not believe like him. Avram Davins on behalf of the people of stone. The people of stone, the Torah tells us, they were bad, they were sinners. These were not good people. We see what they are ready to do to Lot, to his daughters, to the visitors, to the Malachim. But yet the goodness of Avram Avinu is that you have to look out for every human being, even if at the end of the day that human being is not living up to their potential. Even if that human being is not necessarily behaving in the right way, you still have to look out for them. 
And the last and final lesson in the parasha is the lesson of Yakeda. Avram Avinu teaches us what it means to believe in Hashem. The Akeda, the command to offer up Yitzchak as a carbon, was obviously a very dramatic test. We are not Avram Avinu, we are not tested like Avram Avinu. But the take home message is what it means to have a Muna. To believe in Hashem means not only to believe in God when things are good, not only to believe in God when things are going my way, but even when God asks me to do things that are difficult, even when life is difficult, even when my personal circumstances are filled with challenges. Emunah means that I believe that Hashem is by my side, that I believe that Hashem is guiding my circumstances, that I believe that Hashem is intimately involved with everything that is unfolding in my life. It is easy to see God in our lives when things are good. It becomes a bit more challenging to see God in our lives when times are difficult. But from the Akedah, we learn Avram Avinu was able to withstand, to, or I should say, to fulfill, to be willingness to fulfill this test, this task, because he believed that God was walking by his side every step of the way. As he walked to the Akedah, he was not walking alone. He felt the presence of Hashem with him with every step he took. Hashem is with us in every step we take in life. And in the good times, he's there with us. And in the difficult times, he's even closer to us. We have to try to cultivate that Avram Avinu Amuna, the ability to see Hashem, the ability to feel Hashem, even in the most difficult of circumstances. Wishing everyone a wonderful day and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.